Greetings, Mathies. We're looking at arithmetic series today. So adding things up. And we're going to start the day with a little story time. So uh, late 1700s, there's a kid named Carl Gauss, who ends up being this old dude, <laughs> became a brilliant mathematician, physicist. Uh, he contributed to both fields um, extensively. But at that time, he's a, a little punk kid, and he's in the classroom. Right? And of course he's annoying because he's a child prodigy mathematician. So he's like, blah, 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 math is easy. And his friend here is like, quiet down, Gauss. And also his teacher is like, quiet down, Gauss. Right? And uh, of course Gauss doesn't quiet down. Blah, 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 I'm the smartest one. And his, tr his teacher tries to just make him be quiet by by um, giving him a menial task. He's like, Gauss, quiet down. Why don't you add up all the numbers? Tries to give him something to just like, blow them off like I'll add up all the numbers one to a hundred and and <laughs> shut up until I until you do that and, uh, uh, and Gauss is like mm, and then he kicks out the number 50 50 50 50 5,000 50 and the his math profe there calculates the number and he's right right but he does it like this that's the legend anyway we're gonna see what he did with series, and we're gonna do the same thing and you can feel like a math prodigy yourself, sweet. So, um, let's play the same game that Gauss did, but let's not do one to 100, let's just visualize it on a smaller scale. So if we were gonna sum up all the first numbers one to 10, uh, we're gonna find a finite, means there's a limit, um, and it's arithmetic because you're jumping from one to the next by adding, boom, 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 boom adding plus one, plus one, plus one. If you take a look at one through ten, if you look at the first term, the first term and the last term, those add up to eleven. And if you look at the next ones in line, nine and two, oh, also eleven. And if you look at the three and the eight, also eleven. Can you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, Gauss could, because uh, he was a math prodigy as a child. Um, so you end up having packets size 11, right? You can rearrange them and you end up having one, two, three, four, five packets. We had 10 terms to begin with. And since we're pairing them up, you get five packets because each one of the 10 is paired up with the previous one, right? Like the first and the last are paired up the penultimate and the second are are paired up. So you get half as many terms as, half as many packets as the total number of terms and the packet size is, is determined by first and last added up. Let's try that again. So if we were looking at one through six, right, you could take uh, the first term and the last term and say, hey, that's that's equal to seven. So the, this is seven. So there's one, a seven. Here's another seven. Here's another seven. So there should be three sets of seven. But maybe more accurately, we want to call it, I have packets of seven, and I have half as many packets as I have total numbers. So n over two, right? In this case, n is six. So six over two, hence three, so 21. And you could add them up, right? Three, another three is six, there's 10, so that's 16 plus five is 21. It actually works, right? Play the same game here. What's the sum of one to 10? Well, they're packets of 11, right? Every There's a pack, uh, packet of 11 there, and there's a packet of 11 there, and there's a packet of 11 there. You wanna make this clicky sound? Um, and you have half as many packets as you have as you have terms. So this packet oh, neat. right the one and the six, the two and the seven, etc etc you get five uh, five packets, half as many packets as terms so 11 times. so it's packet size times the number of packets which is half as many terms as packets. So you should add those up and it should be, 11 times five should be 55. Cool, same thing with adding to 20. One and 20 gives you a packet of 21, as does two and 19, as does three and 18, 
And so here, I don't want to like visualize all this. I know my packet size is 21, and I have not 20 packets, but half as many. So 10 packets. So if you add up one to one to 20, you should get you should the sum should be 210. Right? And, and that's pretty cool because we can generalize that in this fancy equation. All right? This is in your formula booklet, but uh, this is your packet size, first and last added up, right? First and last added up. And this is how many terms you have, n terms, here it's six terms, so therefore you have half as many packets as terms, right? And psh, Gauss is so, so impressed. Word. So you try it. Look me in the eye and tell me this dude's not gangsta. <laughs> that's Gauss also. I mean, that's not Gauss's quote, that's Gauss's picture. All right, you try that. Okay, we don't have to just add by one each time. This still works if you do this, because this is a packet, this is 19, and so is this, and so is this. And so we could add up those 19s, or you could use that initial formula. The S means you're summing, so the S6 means I'm summing the first six terms, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm looking for S6 in this, and we would look at, uh, this is N over two, so six over two, which means there's three things to add up. Packets, uh, there's, there's three packets, and each packet is term one plus term two, size, big, large, whatever. So three times 19, which is exactly what we expect. Now, it's a lot easier when there's six numbers just to do it like that, but when you have more terms, use the formula, right? So three times 19, multiply them, move on with life. All right, take that same idea and try this one. All right, um, what's nice about this is they told us the last term, so we can work with that. Um, once in a while they don't tell us the last term, we have to use uh, one of our previous formulas for arithmetic sequence to find the last term. Um, oh, and I guess maybe you need to do that in here because check this out, like this is U1 obviously, but they don't tell me which U this is. So it's like U question mark. Right? I don't know what that is. So what we might have to do is backtrack and first find the n number because then I'll know how many packets to expect. I do know, I do know this one. This is 141. We'd plug that in there and this is negative six, but I don't know the n value. So we gotta first use one of our previous formulas and solve for that. So, no, oh, there's something in there. Um, we could figure out that the difference is seven because you're adding seven each time. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and, and we could back solve using this formula. All right, so we said, I start with U1. I try to get to 141, so I, multi I add that D term in minus one times. Yeah. If we do that, this is a faster than me writing with my hand. If we add those up, um, you'd say, I started at negative six, I gotta add bunches of seven and get to 141. We can add six, divide by seven, and figure out that this 141 is the 22nd term. So this is 22, right? So this is, this is U1, and therefore this is U22. Once we've got that, now we can use that, the formula for the series series is summing them up and say, oh, if I have 22, I can put it 22 for my n there, putting u1, un, boom, boom. And if I have 22 items in my list, I have 11 packets, and each packet is this plus this in size, 
then we can multiply those two into 1485. Cool? All right, you try that with this. Find the sum of that to 50 terms. Oh, it tells you the answer, but we're gonna pretend we don't know that. So I can tell that the jump here, the D value is three. I wanna to go to the 50th term. Now, one way to do that is to first use UN, U1, there's U1 plus three times, let's see, it'd be 50. I want the 50th term, so 50 minus one, 49. Right, and you could find un, whatever it is out here, right? Two, three, four, making stuff up. We could then use that in here. Alternately, there's, if in your formula booklet, they have this equation, but they also have another equation that looks like this. The two of them all lined up back to back. It's pretty obnoxious. But what they did with this is they took this one they said S sub n is n over 2, and our packet size is u1 plus un. Right. But we have an equation for un, right? Un is u1 plus a, a change, a d value, n minus 1 times. And instead of using the two value or the two equations back and forth, some of you might choose to embrace this one. I haven't quite because I don't remember it, but I do remember the other two. I've internalized the other two. And they take instead of this un, put all of this in place of it and simplify and you get that, right? It's definitely in your formula booklet. You'll always be able to have it and use it if you want to use it. Um, personally, I find it's a, it burns my time, especially since I know the other equations by heart, I guess, because we've used them so much and they make sense. Uh, so we do that and that's where they get two U1s. There's one there, one there. And then here's this N minus one D. This is just this. Personal preference, I, I have personal preference, right? What's nice about this one is you don't need to first calculate un, but also then I need to look it up in like, I don't know, a formula booklet, right? Um, so let's just use it and see how it would work. Um, I know I've got 50 terms, so I've got 50 over two, so, so this would be 50 over two, 25 packets. I've got two sets of u1, one there, one there, so four and four, so eight. The D value is three, and N minus one is 50 minus one is 49. And then you just grab a calculator and start crunching. Spoiler alert, 3875. Cool. We can play this game to look at uh, values like in, in practice pro or in application problems. Um, I wanna see if you can do that on your own. Um, we will spend a day on application problems, but maybe if you want the challenge of it, try this out. Uh, 20 seats, then 24, then 28, then 30. Um, oh, sorry, there's 30 rows um, in total. So how many total seats, how many can you fit in there? Uh, maybe draw it out, but essentially we know N and we know a few of the starting conditions. Cool. All right, uh, give that a shot. There are practice problems in your notes, in your practice packet, and I will see you later.